You want to see an immature person? Look for someone who is proud. Pride is proof of immaturity. And so when we see Proverbs 29.1, we see a man who has arched his back, laid his head back, bucked his chest up, and said, No, I will not receive correction. No, I will not listen to rebuke. No, I will not submit myself to the wisdom of God's word. No, I will not do what God says because I am smarter than God. No, I will not believe that 2,000 years of human experience should trump the bad decision I'm about to make right now. I'm going to plow on through like a linebacker. I'm going to put my head down and I'm going to blow through the wall and all of y'all are wrong and I'm right. The, The quickest way to see a person who is immature is to see a person who is filled with pride. And that's the man in Proverbs 29.1. And I'm telling you that you need to be completely honest about your maturity level. For you that are single and and you're in a relationship, whether you're college or or whether you're still in high school or or maybe you're in a career and you're in the work world right now, you need to ask yourself this question. Uh, Remember, the enemy is me. Not so much the person I'm in love with or that I'm married to or want to marry. The enemy is me. Start off asking yourself this question. How much time do I spend every day on the Internet versus how much time do I spend in prayer? That'll show you how immature you are. boo yow. We don't like to talk like that. We're like, well, you don't understand. I'm not talking about working like if your job requires you to be on the Internet. I'm talking about looking at videos on YouTube of funny people doing stupid things or like the monkey that scratches his rear end and smells it and falls off the limb. That's funny the first three times, but you've now watched it 400 times. You're immature. I mean, it's funny to laugh at. I'm thinking about it right now, and I just, I'm just, I kind of want to go watch it. Just a confession. (laughs) Ask yourself this question. Am I a stiff-necked, stubborn person? Does anybody ever correct me? Uh, How about this one? How much time do you spend every day on Facebook looking at pictures of people you don't know (laughs) compared to how much time you spend in God's Word? Here's what I... (laughs) There's there's a... Oh, man, I I don't know if I should say this. Okay, I will because this is new spring and I can get away with it. I follow a lot of people on Twitter, and and somebody I was following on Twitter who's in ministry uh, bragged on Twitter about dressing their kids up like characters from the TV show, The Jersey Shore. And I'm thinking, really? Really, you're, you're a minister. You're a minister, and you dress up your kids like characters on the TV show, Jersey Shore. If you watch Jersey Shore and you enjoy it, you're immature. You need to get a life. You need to grow the heck up. There is a real world that we live in where two billion people have never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's a cholera epidemic in Haiti killing thousands of people. 36,000 people a day starve to death or die from waterborne illnesses. And we throw away enough food to feed the whole world. And we spend our time watching junk like that on TV. If that is you, you are light years away from being ready or prepared or sick to get married. Stay away. Stay away. Do not mess up somebody's life until you get serious about becoming a man or a woman of God. Am I saying you're not a good Christian if you watch Jersey Shore? No. Jersey Shore is not the point. The point is, if we are stiff-necked and immature and filled with pride, then nobody can tell us anything. You do not want to marry a person like that. Some of y'all are like, what, what, what if I'm married to a person like that? Do not punch them right now. Do not point to them right now. You could lose your salvation. No, I'm just kidding. You won't lose your salvation. What if you're married to a person like that? Remember, you stay. You stay. And through a good life lived out by biblical principles, you show them who Jesus is. You stay. You don't walk away. But man, if you're single and you're not married, you need to be serious about this. How mature am I? How mature are they? How do we spend our money? How do we spend our time? Pride is always the proof of immaturity. And if you're in a marriage right now and you feel like you're married to someone like that, or maybe you're like that, here's the answer. In Jesus Christ, grow up. Graduate from the milk of the word and move on to the meat. Graduate from from the kiddie pool and get in the deep end. Tithe, serve, volunteer, go on a mission trip, give away one of your extra cars, let a single mom with a baby that she can barely support move into that extra bedroom at your house that no one has lived in since your kids moved out. There are ways, if we're serious, about really being prepared. There are ways that we can grow up, but you got to do something. You can't just read books and listen to sermons about it. 
And finally, the final question. Is there involvement and accountability from older believers? Especially for, for those of us who are single. Do you have any involvement or accountability from older believers? Two final verses, Proverbs 28, 26. Proverbs 28, 26. Listen to what the writer of Proverbs has to say in verse 26. Whoever trusts in himself is a fool, but he who walks in wisdom is kept safe. Don't trust yourself. Don't trust yourself. People all the time say, follow your heart. No, 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 no. do not follow your heart. No, I'm telling you don't. I'm telling you that person was dumb. Do not follow your heart. The Bible says the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things and no one can know it's evil. The human heart takes men like Hitler and turns them into murdering lunatics. The human heart takes men and women and turns them into selfish people who destroy other people's lives. The human heart without Jesus is absolutely ruined. Don't trust your heart, trust God's word. Don't trust your heart. Trust the wisdom of older men and women. Trust the counsel of people who are smarter than you. And turn to Proverbs 15, 22. Turn to Proverbs 15, 22. Remember, the enemy is me. It's not my spouse. It's not my boyfriend. It's not my girlfriend. The enemy is me. I need to work on me. Proverbs 15, 22 says, Plans fail for a lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. Plans fail for a lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. Remember, the scariest thing about marriage is that if you're not prepared and serious, you could miss out on the greatest joy in life. Here's how you get prepared and serious. You submit yourself to the wise counsel of older men and women in the faith. Here's your homework assignment. I want to leave you with this. If you're married or if you're single, listen to this. This is what I want you to do next, for, for the next seven days as we prepare for next Sunday when Perry continues this series. I want you to read Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 31. It's just 21 verses. It'll take you all of about two minutes. I want you to read Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 31. And I want you to ask yourself this question. Now, don't, don't be you know, caught off guard and say, well, this is, a, this is just a passage about a godly woman. True. But everything in those 21 verses applies to men as well as women. So I want you to read these verses and ask yourself this question. What one thing do I know I could do right now? to prepare me for my marriage or make me a better spouse? What is the one thing I know I could do right now? I'm not giving you 25 things to do. I'm not giving you a homework assignment that you're going to do a bunch of research on. What's the one thing I could do right now to either as a single prepare me for marriage so that scary scenario doesn't play out or as a husband or a wife that would make me a better spouse not only to my husband or wife, but one that God could be proud of. Guys, just imagine with me for a second. Imagine with me what would happen if all 12, 13, 14, 15,000 people that call New Spring their home. Imagine with me what it would be like if everybody today got serious about being prepared what if we all applied the wisdom of Proverbs and asked these six questions? What if every single said, I think I'll walk away if these questions reveal to me that I'm not ready or they're not ready? What if every husband and wife, to get, just imagine with me, if every husband and wife took the wisdom from these verses and said, I'm going to apply this to my marriage and I'm going to realize the enemy is me, not you, and I'm going to make myself, by God's grace, a better husband or a better wife. Imagine what we would show the world in our marriages. In 1994, I was uh, about to enter my senior year of college at Gardner-Webb. And me and my two best buddies decided we were going to the Grand Canyon. We had seen the pictures. It was lovely. It was beautiful. It was gorgeous. We had no idea what we were doing. We drove from Dallas, Texas to northern Arizona. 
We had backpacks. Our backpacks were filled with peanut butter, Chef Boyardee, trail mix. We had a great big four-man tent, even though there were only three men that were going to be sleeping in it, me and my two friends. These backpacks weighed 50 pounds. I had on basically a, a, a pair of, uh, they, were, they, they looked like boots, but they were equivalent of flip-flops. I had one pair of socks. We didn't take any sunscreen. We didn't take any pills to put in our water, no water filtration system. We show up at the Grand Canyon because we had seen the pictures and we had heard about it and we showed up and we looked at it and it took our breath away. We got backpacking permits to go into the Grand Canyon and when we left that morning from the top of the North Rim, it was 59 degrees at the top. It was 15 miles to the Colorado River. In exactly two hours after we left the 59 degree North Rim, it was 105 degrees in the middle of that Grand Canyon. We started throwing peanut butter in the bushes. We started taking our Chef Boyardee ravioli and chunking it towards the chipmunks because they eat that stuff. We started throwing trail mix out. We started dumping weight. We ran out of water. We eventually ran out of food. We got to the bottom of the Grand Canyon, and it was 120 degrees, and we realized we got to walk back out 15 miles now. I kid you not, I literally thought I was going to die of a heat stroke. When I got to the top of the Grand Canyon, there was a park ranger waiting on us, and I guess we looked really, really rough. When the park ranger said, first time to the Grand Canyon? We said, yeah. He said, next time you'll be prepared, won't you? If you're single, you've got time to prepare. If you're married, you're in it. Prepare now. Do the right thing for the glory of God. Father, I ask you that you would take these words from your scripture today. And would you use them and anoint them for those who are single and not married, to be serious and prepared. And for those of us who are, to be equally serious and prepared for the marriage you've already given us. On every campus, with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I want to ask you this question. Maybe you've realized today from this message that not only are you not serious and prepared about your relationships, but you're not prepared for eternity. And on every campus right now, I want to ask you this question. If you've realized that, that you don't understand all this because you're not prepared, and you're not prepared because you don't really know the Lord, no matter who you marry or how good you may think a marriage may end up being one day, if you've missed Jesus, that marriage not only will never fulfill you, but that marriage alone cannot save you. So if you have never trusted Christ, you need to be prepared for eternity, and you need to be serious about your soul. And if you want to give your life to Jesus on every campus right now, we believe the gospel works at New Spring, and we want to give you a chance right now to trust him. So if you need to give your life to Jesus, call on his name right now, and he'll save you. Pray this to him right where you sit. The words are not magic. And just because you say the words, it doesn't mean you're saved. But if you mean them in your heart, the Bible says he will answer you. And Romans 10, 13 says he'll save you. Anyone who calls on his name will be saved. Pray this to Christ right now if you want to know him and give control of your life to him. Just pray this to him in your heart. Jesus, I need you right now. I want to be saved. I want to be serious about you. I want to be prepared for eternity. I repent of my sin, Jesus. And I give you control of my life. I'm all yours, Jesus. And I'm all in. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. Now, with your eyes still closed, every single campus, if you just prayed those words to the living God, I'm going to ask you to do this campus pastors are going to be the only ones looking but we want to see if you just trusted Christ and prayed that prayer to him and you meant what you said I want you to raise your hand straight up above your head right now and I want you to keep it up for just a second we're not going to make you come forward or stand up but I want you to raise it up right now go raise it up if you just prayed those words to Jesus I'm going to count in this room just keep them up one two three four 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Praise God. You can put your hands down. Everybody look at me on every campus. Right here in this house, 15 people just prayed to receive Christ and trust Jesus as their Savior. Next week is going to be one of the most incredible services you've ever participated in. Perry's told me what's going to happen next week. You don't want to miss it. But on every campus, if you prayed to receive Christ today and you trusted Jesus, we have a Bible for you and we want to get you plugged in. Go by the Resource Center when you leave and tell them, I gave my life to Jesus today so that we can follow up with you as you begin your journey of discipleship. And we will see you next Sunday as Perry continues Man versus Wife. God bless you. Go in peace.